Hi, I'm attorney Gregory Dell, joined by attorney Alexander Palomara, and we are going to discuss one of Alex's success stories against Unum Insurance Company, and Unum being one of the world's largest disability insurance companies. It's very common for you to resolve many claims in favor of um, our clients against them. So in these videos, we like to talk about what the occupation was of the claimant, what their dis definition of disability was, why they were denied, how you were able to help them, and then provide some tips for people who have Unum long-term disability claims to help them keep their disability benefits or get them reinstated. So let's get into the background of this particular claim against Unum. All right, so our client came to us after being denied benefits. Prior to being denied, she had worked for an employer. She was actually working for an accounting firm in New Hampshire. She worked as the billing manager. She worked there for, I think, 15 years before filing this claim for benefits. Probably about seven years prior to stopping work, started suffering from knee issues and, and mostly back issues, lower back issues. But she fought through it. She got treatment, as much treatment as she could, and always suffered through the pain and whatnot. But unfortunately, lo and behold, it got worse and worse and worse. Everything was kind of progressive. And by 2018, she had to stop work. Um, thankfully, her employer provided her with coverage under short-term and long-term disability insurance policies. Thankfully, her, um, I mean, the, the policies were with Unum. She filed a claim for benefits, but unfortunately, her claim for long-term disability benefits was never paid, denied from the get-go, and, and Unum just basically did a review and said, we're, we're denying your claim for benefits. We don't think you're disabled. So she was approved for short-term disability? Correct. Who approved that? Unum. And how long was that for? For six months. Okay, so how do you get approved for six months and then you transition to the long term and then they say no? Well, two things could happen. One, you could magically, magically get better at the stroke of midnight when your short term ends and long term kicks in. Or two, I mean, what typically happens is that, you know, the short, you know, Unum is divided up into different, you know, parts of their company and one group is the short term disability group, one group's the long term disability group. You know, they don't really interact. I mean, maybe they send records to one another, but I guess what they really don't do is share reviews that they've conducted with one another. But in this scenario, our client's suffering from lumbar uh, degenerative disc disorder and, and um, uh, arthritis in the spine. Um, she, there's no way she could work. And what did Unum do? With the long-term disability claim, they had an in-house doctor, a medical director, perform a review of this claim. Not someone who specializes in, in back issues. Um, and they've relied upon this one review to go ahead and deny the claim. But what I want to point out here, which is kind of unique to this claim, is that while they're performing review, you know, our client filed this claim for benefits, she sent in medical records to support her claim, and in these medical records, something that Unum noticed was the fact that, um, that she actually, that she stopped working in late April of 2018, and in May of 2018, she flew from New Hampshire to Florida. So, in this denial letter, what Unum kind of did was, it's kind of like a we got you moment, where they said, not only did you work through the tax season of 2018, you also were able to go on vacation the next month and fly to Florida. I mean, they don't, they're assuming it's a vacation, they have no idea whatsoever. But then it's like, we got you moment, you know, you can do those, thing, those two things, we don't think you're disabled. But the problem is they were wrong. So she grinds it out exactly. towards the end of, end of work through tax season, kind of like as a, well, two reasons. One is a service to her clients, and, and number two, to try to get her work done and continue working as long as she can. And that's kind of like, look, I have had, you, you mentioned seven years. Right. I've been suffering all this time. I'll suffer another, whatever it was towards the end. I'll get through this final thing so I don't leave a lot of my, her clients high and dry right. when, when, when they, or the, the company when they need her. And then what, what is a two and a half hour, three hour flight from New Hampshire to Florida show in comparison to working a 40-hour work week that requires you to be there five days, eight hours a day. Exactly. They don't know how she suffered after she landed in Florida, what she did the next couple days. Did she recoup at her friend's or family's house and she couldn't get up for the next two days? But being able to fly for two and a half hours shows nothing. It doesn't show that you could actually work 40 hours a week. Because let's just say she could sit for two and a half hours on a Monday. It doesn't mean she can work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. She could be down for the count the remainder of that week. So for them to harp on that, it was kind of like a joke. It makes me laugh, and it's, I think it's a ridiculous reason to deny a claim, but unfortunately they use it to deny the claim, and the person was without benefits for, for half of a year by the time we got involved, filed the appeal, and got her approved. You know, it takes time to get all that done. Unfortunately, she's sitting there with no income from Unum at that time. But isn't it insane that a medical trained doctor by, who's hired by Unum, who works for Unum, says, you can sit on an airplane for two and a half hours, therefore you could work 40 hours a week? How does sitting on an airplane watching a movie, reclining your seat, sleeping, getting up and down whenever you want to go to the bathroom or do whatever, you walk around, 
have any relationship to being, you, you said she was an accounting? A billing manager. A billing manager. So highly detailed, have to review the bills for all of the clients. If she makes even one number wrong, someone's getting mad, someone's not getting paid, someone's getting charged too much, things aren't getting done. So very fine um, detail and attention required for her work. And if she's in pain and sitting in front of a computer all day, how does that relate to just sitting on an airplane? It doesn't. And the fact that she worked through the, you know, the April tax season, I mean, it just gives her a lot of credibility. I mean, like I said earlier, she worked for seven years in pain and suffering, right? And the fact that she probably made this claim years earlier, or at least months earlier, and, and what does that actually do? It actually saved money for Unum, you know? Because they, she'd have made this claim three, four years earlier, they could have been paying her claim for those three or four years. And, and so she's working, she's being a, a superwoman here and has a lot of credibility. Instead of, you know, thanking her for not making an earlier claim, what do they do? They deny her claim. And I want to talk about this seven-year history because people contact us and sometimes people contact us years before they're even going to file. And we talk about this fact to say no good deed goes unpunished. And what we mean by that is that the longer you continue to work with this medical condition, the more likely the company is going to say, it looks like you've been able to accommodate yourself or learn to deal with the symptoms and conditions and work through them. Whereas I guess a normal person thinks, no, what really happened was I worked until I couldn't work anymore. Right. Not that I adjusted to it, but the companies, especially Unum always looks at it like, no, you've had this for years. We're lo we looked at your x-ray or MRI from three years earlier. We're looking at it now, nothing changed. Right. But that gets into, you don't treat the chart, you treat the patient right. and what their symptoms are. So this is a classic, this is a classic case where you know, you don't rely on saying you've been, you know, you had seven years doing it and now you can do it. You got to go with the symptoms. So what did you have to point out on your appeal to overcome this denial? Well, obviously we, we pointed out the fact that there's x-ray evidence, you're talking about objective evidence, x-ray evidence, MRI evidence. Additionally, what we did was we sent her to functional uh, capacity testing. And so we had her go to see a physical therapist who, threw her, who, who ran her through about three or four hours of testing to show what her physical restrictions, limitations are, and her capabilities are. And lo and behold, you know, this independent physical therapist came back to us and did a huge report and said she has a less than sedentary capacity. So she can't even do a sedentary job. Her job is a sedentary job, but she didn't have the physical ability to do a sedentary job, let alone the cognitive ability to do a sedentary job, which she's suffering from pain all day. So while she did tough it out through the end of April, she was a superwoman, but lo and behold, the medical records and the updated testing we did prove that she could not do her own job or any sedentary job whatsoever. So we filed the appeal and the insurance company within 60 days wrote back to us saying, we're overturning our denial. We got it wrong here. We're, we're approving this claim. She's still on claim to this day. And, and how classic of a denial is this from Unum? It's pretty classic. Um, you know, the fact that they, I mean, sometimes they rely upon independent physician reviewers, but a lot of times I see with Unum denial, the first denial, they're just relying upon their own medical director or an in-house doctor. So someone that pays, you know, that they're paying the salary for is performing these reviews all day. And I mean, I, I'd hate to guess, but I have to guess the great majority of these reviews are probably not supportive of these people applying for benefits. Um, so they're probably, their job is to essentially write reports, denying claims. And, and you would think these reviews are, you know, they're going through hundreds of pages of medical records are going to be 20 pages long. For the most part, they might do three pages of, of summarizing the medical records and the actual, you know, the actual, you know, main opinion piece is maybe like three or four sentences long or maybe a paragraph long and it's like you're denying someone's disability insurance claim their income and you're making them suffer over these four sentences that have no no reliability whatsoever you know and the other thing that you have to realize the policy gives the insurance companies many different options like I said earlier they can do an independent physician consultant review or an independent doctor performs a review which you know can be biased as well but it gives it a little bit more credibility if it's someone who does, doesn't actually work for the insurance company with the insurance company, what they should do is maybe send them some of these claimants to functional testing to actually have someone put their hands, you know, hands and eyes on them to actually evaluate the people. But they don't often do that because I think it's probably cost them it's a little expensive. bit. It's expensive. You know, but I mean, thankfully they don't do that because sometimes it would make it harder to win these ERISA claims if the insurance company did a, a much better job at denying the claims, you know. But, but the, the fact of the matter remains that our client was disabled, remains disabled. We have objective evidence proving this in many different forms. Right. I mean, Unum's a company who I know two years ago haven't seen their financials uh, in the past year, but reported almost a billion dollars in profit. They 
are, you know, they don't have any sympathy or remorse or anything. They'll deny you. They know you're not getting paid. If you have the ability to fight them or you go out and get a lawyer that can help you, then you can fight back with them. But some people either go away or they can't even wait the three or four or five months it's going to take to do an appeal, maybe longer, because they got to put food on the table. So if you got to put food on the table, even if you can't move, you're going to go out and do whatever you can. The problem is then that's Unum trying to strong arm you back to work. Now you've gone back to work, even though you said you couldn't work, and you kind of have to throw your claim away, potentially. So that's where, you know, fortunately we help people contingency fee basis. We don't make them pay any money up front or anything, and we dive in and try to help them and do it as quickly as we can. But you have to have some staying power. And people say, how do they expect me to survive? The answer is they don't care how you're going to survive. But we will fight and do whatever we can, you know, as quick as possible to get those benefits reinstated. And we hope that people aren't strong armed into having to try to go to do something that they really can't do. And then they're just hurting themselves or possibly hurting someone else, depending upon if it's an occupation where they're providing a service to someone else or not even physically like a doctor or a medical provider, but a service where other people rely on them because they're not able to do their job. And I've had scenarios where my clients have been denied benefits and, you know, they're like, Alex, I need to put food on the table. I need to do something. I need some income. And maybe they'll Uber drive. Maybe they'll figure out something. And I go, listen, you need to do whatever you need to do to survive. I'll figure out, you know, the solution after the fact. So I'm working on the appeal. I get them on claim. And I tell the insurance company they did a little bit of work, but you force them to do this work because they're going to be homeless. You know, and I figure out the solution. I'll fix that problem later on. So sometimes you got to do whatever you right. need to do to survive and, and we'll figure it out later on and we'll get you past that. But for the most part, it's better if you don't, if you can you know, wait those couple of months. But you know, that's why you hire us because we'll figure out the way to, get, to prove to the insurance company that you are disabled, remain disabled. Anything that you did in the meantime was just to, you know, to survive. Well, congratulations on this claim and I'm glad you got Unum to come around to the realm of reality and be reasonable and pay the client and hopefully you'll continue. I know you'll continue to protect her benefits and hopefully she won't have any issues in the future. If you're someone who has a Unum long-term disability claim and you're having any issues whatsoever with your claim, feel free to reach out to Alex, myself, any of our disability lawyers. No matter where you live in the country, we'll help you, provide you an immediate free consult, and we look forward to speaking with you should you need our help. Hi, I'm Gregory Dell, the managing attorney of Dell Disability Lawyers, and I hope you find the video you just watched helpful. We put these videos out all of the time, and we'd love if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. Beyond our videos on our YouTube channel, we also have lots of information available on our website at diattorney.com, and we encourage you to come to our website. The goal is, is that we want you to be educated about the disability insurance process, and when you get to our website, you'll see that we have information all about your specific disability insurance company, your occupation, and your medical condition. And we've designed our website such that you can easily search our website to find things that you may specifically be looking for. Now at our website, we have thousands and thousands of pages of information, hundreds of videos that you can search, plus we're building a section of reviews of all the disability insurance companies, and we have the Ask Our Lawyer section where you can go ahead and ask us any questions that you may have. Now we realize that you may not need us right now, but you may need us in the future to help you with your disability claim and we think one of the best ways to keep in touch is by clicking the button below and subscribing to our channel and most importantly again no matter where you live in the country we're always available just go ahead and give us a call we're happy to discuss your claim and let you know immediately if we can help you